keep an eye on the time so I can take my watch. Thank you all for doing this. You all are fantastic. Fantastic. So, what we're going to do is a really quick lesson on art appreciation and art criticism. Um, did, was, did anybody do the class I did last December? No. no? All right. Well, so really fast. This, that's what it was three days on that. I'm going to give you the half hour version of that. All right. Really fast. Art appreciation is kind of being able to like look at a work of art and understand what makes it good and what makes it bad and kind of be able to talk about what you see or what you get from the art, either intellectually or emotionally. All right. Easy enough. I think we've all talked about times. We've all we've all had a work of art that we've liked, right? Mm -hmm. And we've all had one that we thought was really awful, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's that's. It's just being able to talk about it and being able to say why we're talking about it. Um, we're also going to talk about art criticism, which is about attaching meaning to a work of art. Okay. So sometimes, if we're talking, for example, if we're talking about a symbolic work of art. I'm talking about maybe what the red heart means, or what the pink band means, or what the blue ocean means, or what the dark sky means. Right? That's criticism. That's attaching a meaning to what we're looking at. Now, the really important things for attaching meaning and for appreciating a work of art is just using logical. There's a bunch, but what we're going to talk about is using logical arguments and using evidence. Right? We're, we're going to get into it a little bit, but before we do that, let's talk about how many of you remember the principles of art and the, or the elements of art and the principles of design. You know them. What's one of them? Line. Color is one. Line is one. Good. Texture. Texture. Shape. 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 Yes. Shape. Form. Space. Depth. Depth. Perspective. Proportion. Perspective. Rhythm. Unity, balance, all these flow. Yeah, now, all these are good words to talk about. All right. So, so what we have to do is use those words. I'll tell you what, I will get my computer and I'll show you. There's a whole bunch of different. Let's see if I can find it. Here. There's a whole bunch of really wonderful resources you can use. This comes from the Getty Center. You have to look very close to all of them. All right, let's see if I can do this upside down. And, you know, there's, you know, definition of line, talks about it. Um, let's see, where's another one? Shape and form, talks about it. We've got a set of things. All right, so there's a whole bunch of resources that you can use. When I give you time to do a little work here, what I'll do is I'll bring this computer back and you can share and look at the words. All right. Now, there's the two big differences between the elements and the principles. Do you know? Elements is like line, shape, color, form, space. And the principles are like rhythm, unity, variety. Can you tell the gene? There's a functional difference between them. The elements are what makes up the principles. Keep going. You're right. Keep going. That's a good analogy. I never thought about it like that, but that's good. What else? Keep going. Like the meaning behind that? Sort of. It's more like the abstract understanding and perspective of the You're out here. So the, the elements are like the words we need to use. Yeah. Color doesn't have meaning. The color is just color. Blue is just blue, right? Yeah. But the way that we use color and the way we use line, those are the principles, right? So you paint something blue, you talk about it being blue, you talk about that. Color, but then when you talk about the blue being very deep or very light, then what you have is the blue is now a, it, it, it has a thing about it. It has a purpose behind it. But what you all said was really quite good. Like so what did you say, the motive and the, yeah, the physical the motive, there you go. Right, all right, so really quick, just make some fast notes here. What you want to do when you look at a work of art is you want to start with something that's called formal analysis. All right. In the in the class, just write formal analysis. Um, in the class that I had, when you think of formal analysis, don't think of like something that's proper or structured. That's not what it means. 
formal analysis really comes from that word form. So it really means what does the artwork look like? You, so look at a work of art and, and just make notes about it. You know, like what color is it? Um, what kind of line does it have in it? What kind of shapes does it have in it? Um, is it abstract or is it, or is it uh, very realistic? How is the rhythm set up? All these kinds of things. You're just looking for what you see. Really the best thing I think to do whenever I do this is I make like a, just a little brainstorming list, you know? I take notes of what I see, right? And then add sort of an emotional reaction to it. So a uh, work of art can be very depressing, it can be very exciting, it can be very, well, I don't know, any emotion you can think of, that's what it can be. And try to attach what you're looking at with either an emotional reaction or uh, an intellectual reaction. So, for example, I'm just going to use I'm just going to use the word blue, right? Or here, I'll use an actual work of art. Let's see here. You can all go to the blog and see it if you want. Let's see it. Extended lesson. On it. So here we go. I'm going to use Kara Walker's work here. All right. So there you go. Can we all see that okay? Pretty okay? I'm going to stand on the other side of the aperture. So, I'm just going to, before I go any further, I'm going to say that that work of art is actually not a drawing. It's a piece of cut paper that's pasted onto the wall. Alright? And, so if we look at it, can we tell what it is? It's a lady. Yeah, it's a woman. What, what's going on? What's happening to her? She's, she seems to have... Some kind of chain around her. Yeah, some accessories. She's barefoot. Barefoot. I look at it and I think it looks like a falling figure. Yeah. You know. Also, I think well, something that's really important here that is really basic and sometimes it's, you miss it. It's so basic you miss it. Right? It's like only black or only white. There's nothing in between. So look at that and just amongst yourselves or on your piece of paper here. Just write down, first off, what you see and sort of an emotional reaction to it. And this doesn't have to be deep. This can be in like bullet points or, or just little phrases or notes. Check this out. All right, here's a good way to use the, use the logical argument of evidence, right? Your evidence is it's very simple. It's only black and white. And what kind of, what kind of emotional reaction does that lead you to? So you, it's the simplicity of it makes you really engage with it, right? And does that, what kind of like emotional response? Think of like a, a, a range of emotional response does that elicit from you. Go ahead. Um, okay. I don't, when I look at it, I feel like a sense of fear and almost like mm. failure. Mm. Um, kind of the, just the way she's placed on the wall mm -hmm. and how she's falling and what her stance looks like she's almost like beaten down. And, um, it looks almost weak. All right. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Um, I think that the artist was trying to tell us to pay attention to all the details because the silhouette is so fine. It's black and white. Uh -huh. Everything that's sticking out, it, it, 
I think she wants us to say, look at this and from it take what you can imagine this person, however you want to imagine it, for each individual. Um, because the figure is black and the rest is white. It's like you can put your own. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's exactly it. And you were able to, just what I wanted you did right now was you were able to take what you see and attach a, a meaning to it or attach a like an emotional or an intellectual response. That's exactly what we're doing with formal analysis. All right, I'm going to move the camera just for fun. Because isn't it fun to move the camera? <laughs> Let's see. Come on, cameraman. Uh-oh. I'm not calling. Yes. Okay, that's fine. You know what? I'm going to try and wrap it up before then. What time is it now? You got like 10 minutes? Okay. Let's see. All right. There we go. I hope the sound is okay. I'm going to be really bummed out if the sound is bad. All right, cool. So that's formal analysis, right? And then critical analysis would be, as I said before, it's attaching, it's attaching meaning to it, right? Now, I think one of the easy, I think it's an intimidating word to think of. It's, it's, it's like criticism. I have to make, give this thing meaning. But it's actually not as difficult as you think. Do you remember, did any of you do MIP under the areas of interaction? Yeah, yeah it's like that. You know how they say, take, take like the thing environments and look at a problem through the lens of environments. That's what that's what um, that's what criticism is like. Take a, take a particular standpoint and then interpret the work of art from how you're looking at it. Now, yes, go for it. Go get a tissue. Box. It's okay. But I'm going to keep talking. All right. Um, so it's just like that. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them, and you can even make up your own, which is kind of fun. Right? But the really popular ones, feminism is really popular right now, so interpreting, interpreting a work of art through a feminist perspective. Um, what's really good for any of you who are doing diploma level art is biographic. And biographic is, and that's kind of what we're going to do a little bit here, is biographic is looking at a work of art and deciding how that fits into the whole artist's work. Right? It's going to be good for you guys who are doing the diploma because doing the diploma you have to give a little description of why your painting fits in, why you chose this painting and how it fits into everything you did at school. See, it's criticism of preparing you for it. Um, another really easy one that I think is good for, for you all is called semiotics, which is a long word for meaning talking about the symbols. You know, so you look yeah. at you look at the symbol, what does the symbol mean to you? What could the symbol possibly mean to another person? Is it like the signifiers of the Exactly like that. All right? So, tell you what, if you have artwork here, grab it. And if you don't have artwork here, you can use a friend's. Um, I have to leave, but that's gotta go. my artwork if anybody wants. Okay, thank you, Jackie, for volunteering your artwork. Okay, no, that's fine. You gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah. For another five minutes. For another five minutes, all right. All right, so let's make a go of it. Um, take your artwork, look at it, describe either on paper or in your brain, describe what you see and make a, make a little, you know, like a formal analysis of it and then uh, make an interpretation. Make it either through symbols or make it through, or make it through like biography. Did you get that, Max? I'm sorry. I never seen no, I think you should do it as biography because you know better how it fits into the whole grand scheme of your other work. Unless you want to do it, like unless you want to pretend you haven't seen it. But I think that's difficult. I'd kudos to you if you can make that happen. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sarah. Can I do it? Sure. It's always lovely to have your input. <laughs> trying to be fur or aluminum foil or anything. But it is quite good fixed too. Mm -hmm. If you're
you like, Bonnie, I can swing the canvas around so you don't have to yeah. look over your shoulder. Okay, it's kind of like a, I get, get You're always such a good sport. <laughs> another moment. I don't, I don't want to keep you longer than I said it would, but I'm going to move the camera in the meantime because it's more fun. Is the camera on right now? Yeah, the camera's been running. I hope it's been running. I'll be really sad if it's not. When I get a big computer, that's what I'll do. And I have enough money that I don't have to worry about working and I can play with the computer all day. All right. Are we ready? Can we, can we share what we got? Like, so, so, one, tell us which what you're talking about, which work of art you're talking about, to make a formal analysis, all right? So, like, tell us what's going on in there and, and your kind of emotional reaction. Three, make a critical analysis, make some criticism, which means attach meaning to it. Do us a favor and tell us if it's either, if it's either semiotics, you know, so about symbols, or if it's biography, so about the artist and the artist's work. All right, and don't forget the thing, the thing to be li listening for in your classmates, and the thing to be making sure you're doing with yourself is to give evidence. You know, don't just say it makes me feel sad. Say the red makes me feel sad, and when I look at this painting, which is lots of red and it's not very bright, I feel sad about it. All right? Yes. Oh, jeez. And a fashion-conscious guy like me. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, I'll start. So, I analyzed this piece of art by Isabella Casadas, <laughs> and um, I'm doing a formal analysis. So it was there's a lot of warm colors um, kind of blended together, um, a lot of pinks and kind of oranges dashed in with some white. Um, I noticed the texture of the piece itself, like it's coming, it's, if you put your hand on it, it's like rough, um, it's unorganized, it's repetitive, it's, it's like constant um, mm -hmm. thing. And then I noticed the um, electrical poles with the little kind of fishing line to represent the electric lines themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, also just talking about the canvas uh, size and shape had a lot to do with my emotional reaction to this. Um, it, because it's like this uh, horizontal kind of shape, you have to go from either you know right to left or left to right. Normally, we'll go left to right because 
that's how we read, so that's mm. what I did. Mm. Um, and it kind of made me take in the whole thing, and I was left with a feeling of, like, um, not being, like, overwhelmed, but just, like, having to take in all the color and all the texture, and just from, like, going for so long. Mm. Um, and talking about the biography, biography, what is that word again? Biographics. Biographics. So mm. knowing the artist and knowing <laughs> that she hails from Brazil, uh -huh. um, I can assume that this fits into her overall collection because not only is it about her heritage and where she comes from, um, but it also addresses uh, the really big situation of poverty in Brazil because mm. it's a, a favela and um, rough representation. A rough representation of a favela, and it also just ties into the idea that there's like it's an overwhelming amount of poverty, and it's just it's mm. continuous, and it takes up this whole mountainside, and that's what I will relate it to the size <laughs> and the shape All right. of okay, the piece. Good. Very good. And now you, you referred to you referred to like some of the formal aspects yeah. and how that led you to uh, uh, your interpretation. Good. Love. Anyone else? Try it. Um, Come on, then you you like So I analyzed this art piece, which I did a few months ago. All right. So this piece tried to represent jellyfishes, but um, they're represented by familiar oval um, shapes, but also ha includes a lot of organic. Um, shapes and strokes. So the piece uses darker colors towards the edges to give depth and a sense of direction to the audience and directs them towards the jellyfish. Mm. And the blue color I feel interprets two various, two varying emotions. So someone could interpret it as being something sad and monotonous and something not intriguing, but others could interpret it as something light, airy, and refreshing. Mm. So I feel that gives the piece different, um, a big... When I was making this piece, it was, it was the idea of using different materials, different heavy materials to interpret an uh, animal which was light and airy and something very different. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see the contrast between materials and how they would work to create something which is unknown to the audience and intrigues them and makes them try and interpret it and just make them understand and try to just think of what could happen. All right. Last thing, that interpretation. Does anyone does anyone have a reaction against the color? Because I what you said and and kind of what I feel when I look at the color is a little bit different. And I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Max. Uh, what else you got? With the color, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> From the outsides, it's darker as it and as you go into the center of the piece, it gets lighter. Also, um, I think with it being darker, the texture of the piece also adds on to that because with the lighter colors, it's a little bit more transparent mm -hmm. than without. Um, and I think, mm -hmm. I guess, with the lighter colors, it brings the attention more to the center All of right. the painting. All right. Go ahead. I think it would be easy to feel overwhelmed by the darkness and the textures on the edges of the piece, um, because there's just so much texture in the specific corners themselves. Oh. Um, and I don't know, I, I'm not sure if I feel overwhelmed by them, but she's got, um, she had like a halo around her actual figures that I think really helps concentrate them. If mm. not, they would be kind of lost, I think, because even though the tissue on the tentacles or whatever, of the jellyfish, bring a lot of texture to them, I feel like the concentration of it is down here, mm. where the attention shouldn't be. All right, all right. Um, but I still don't feel I don't feel overwhelmed like I don't feel lost in the piece even though that's going on. Okay. I think it's balanced out well with the glow of the actual figures. All right. All right. I don't know what I, I look at it and like you know what it's this blue color here for me is very 
it's a combination of like exciting and soothing mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not at all a, a dark, depressing blue. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a vibrant, exciting blue, but at the same time, it's kind of, it's still a little bit mysterious, but like mysterious without any kind of negative connotation. I think the green I, kind of dripping down also helps with the light yellows. It mm. lightens the piece a little bit. Mm -hmm. mm. You, you, you're right about that. Cool. All right. More? Do you want to go? You don't have to. We can kind of wrap it up. Or we can talk off the record, mm -hmm. off the camera if you like. Go ahead, Ms. Hibbert. I like the way that um, the line between representation and abstraction is just rethinking that. I just think it's a really nice balance. You can mm. tell that it's not more descriptive or less descriptive. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a nice, like, in between the two of those. Yeah. Well, yes, more no. Max, yes, no. That's okay. We can keep talking. <laughs> all right, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chance, your stars. You think you got some? Yeah, I got, a, I got what I need. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. That was helpful. Use it in school. No. Use it in your I school stuff. Listening to someone else talk about the piece is so helpful. Because mm. I haven't done the critique for that and one. And I love what uh, old Bonnie said. Yeah, me yeah. too. Because that thing, what you clearly put that is there, is that the width of this composition yeah. gives you that sense of Endless, like I hadn't thought about that at all. And mm. also, when I look at the colors, it's like that. It's like, that, it's like a smoggy, foggy, dirty, yeah. polluted, lots of fires, city, air thing. Yeah, and I mm. felt, I feel like kind of with the white, right smack right in the middle, there. I feel like a fogginess there. Mm. And that was the area that I hated. I, I hated that area at first for a while because mm. it was kind of undecided. <laughs> I like it though. Keep going.